I was sleeping with possibly three to four, you know, women some days um, and, and still didn't think that was out of the norm at the time. It's been said that fame comes at a price. For NBA star Winston Bennett, it fueled an addiction to sex. It started in high school. He grew up in a Christian home and knew what he was doing was wrong, but it did not deter him. There's a hole in all of us that has to be filled. You know, I felt like sex would fulfill that need that I, that I so deeply desired, um, only to find out that it wasn't fulfilling that need. The hole was still there. Winston was a basketball star in high school and was recruited by the University of Kentucky. Now in the spotlight, he got all the attention from women he wanted, which fed his addiction. Once I reached uh, college, then it really went to a whole new level. You know, I felt like that we were on a, a concert stage because there's so much notoriety and fame and everything that attaches itself to that. Winston admits he enjoyed it, but says the thrill was short-lived. Every time I'd had sex, I would generally go and be, you know, completely sheltered, completely um, non-sociable, um, shut myself off in the room, let down the curtains, the shades, because then the whole guilt and the shame would set in. That whole knowing that, hey, you've been, you're reproach against God again. You know, when is this gonna stop? After playing basketball in Europe, he went to the NBA's Cleveland Cavaliers. He also married Peggy, a girl from his home church in Kentucky. He thought marriage would bring an end to his struggles, but it didn't. Just days after their wedding, he had a one night stand and confessed it to his new wife. And that's when he said, well, she was a stranger. She was a maid in the hotel. I thought, people do that. They just have sex with people that they don't know, that they've never met. I was devastated. Um, it was like I had been hit with a, by a train. It wouldn't be the last time. Winston tried to be faithful, but the temptations on the road were too much for him. I knew that I had biblical grounds to divorce my husband. But what I wanted was, what, what, what is it that God wants me to do? In this process, Winston would tell me that, I don't want to do this to you. I don't want to hurt you. I don't know how to stop. I wish I could die. I would see him crying out to God, asking God to help him. So I knew that there was a person, the real Winston Bennett, on the inside, locked up, didn't know how to get out from underneath the garbage that was inside of him. Some friends urged Peggy to leave, but each time she found the grace to keep praying for Winston and to believe God. And I knew it was God, I knew it wasn't me because I would be hurting. It, th this was the type of pain that I would never wish on anybody, but yet God would give me compassion and he would say, just trust me, forgive him and trust me to turn him around. It caused me to trust God at a level that I had never trusted God before. After the occurrence and feeling the guilt of shame, that was all a part of it, was the repentance aspect. But it was never a complete turning away. It was a turning away for a while until I felt that emotion again. After three years in the NBA, Winston's playing career ended due to injuries. Later, Rick Pitino hired him as an assistant coach at Kentucky took Winston with him when he was hired to coach the Boston Celtics. But Winston broke the team's ethics code when he slept with a college student, and he was fired. I was right where I wanted to be, and then I make a humongous uh, professional mistake and spiritual mistake um, that caused me my job. So, you know, it felt like the house of cards had all, you know, fallen down, and I was at the end of my rope. Peggy was crushed when she found out and tried to kill herself. And I thought, God, I can't do this anymore. So I got in the car and I proceeded to drive. I got on expressway. I could hear the voice saying, push the pedal, push the pedal, get the car to 90. Peggy called her pastor to say goodbye. I was just crying, I was screaming. I was telling him I was getting ready to end my life. I could hear him on the other end, pleading the blood of Jesus. He just kept saying Jesus. And the more he said, Jesus, I could feel my foot coming off the pedal and the car straightening up. Peggy and Winston separated. 
Then one day she heard a sermon at her church about demonic strongholds and gave a copy to Winston. And he talked about generational curses. And as he began to really define what these demonic forces are, even when it came to sex and drugs, the tears just began to flow down my face because I felt like he was talking directly about my situation, about Winston. Later, a friend encouraged her to study the book of Hosea in the Bible. God told Hosea to marry Gomer, which was a prostitute. God told Hosea to love her. It showed me how God felt towards Israel, the adultery, all the things that we do, we do. He didn't kick us to the curb. I knew without a doubt that's what he really was telling me to do. Forgive, to love, as Hosea did. The turn of events was a wake-up call for Winston, who finally went into counseling for his addiction. It allowed me to look at myself differently. You know, up to this point, I hadn't considered myself to be and neither wanted to accept that I could possibly be a sex addict. You know, there was a different mode of thinking uh, by going into this treatment program and not only finding myself and understanding what I was dealing with, but also giving me the tools, hopefully, to help deal with it. After much time praying and seeking God, Winston finally began to overcome his addiction. There had to be a choice to make pursuing God an all-consuming passion. That's the real turning point for me. You know, I'm, a, I'm in awe at what God has done in Winston. Peggy says she gives God all the credit for saving their marriage. Our marriage would not be where it is today if God were not in the center. He is. He is our marriage. He is the captain of this ship. Sometimes it's not easy to show people that it causes you pain, love, but that's what God does for us. Winston and Peggy both chronicled their stories in books. Today, Winston speaks to men about overcoming sex addiction. I had to see my husband in the eyesight of God, how God saw him. And now it's like, it's indescribable. I can smile, I have joy and peace. The love that we share now is better than it's ever been. This is the kind of love that God was wanting us to have.